Hey, what's up everybody? Hey, MP here. And today we're gonna shoot a video. It's gonna be a live coding session. And what we're gonna do is build the world's sweetest counting app, the obligatory counting app, because what we're gonna talk about is state management. So, tons of state management libraries out there. We had a great discussion down at Hacks Camp in Durham, North Carolina last week, um, where we uh, just went back and forth with the different uh, state management libraries, uh, state uh, management methods, do we need state management at all, uh, some really great discussions. From, that, um, from those discussions um, came uh, MobX and I did a demo of MobX and built a very simple counting application uh, using MobX and actually using a, a brand new tool from the folks over at Adobe uh, that's a custom base class that allows you to print uh, MobX state in, right inside your web components, manipulate uh, the state of MobX right inside your web components. Extremely easy, um, takes a lot of the, the uh, ceremony out of writing uh, MobX in your, in your web components. So, we're going to start from scratch. Let's get started. Create a simple index.html, put some stuff in there, I'm going to say my my sweet counting app. And the first thing that we want to add is our hacks app. So I'm sorry, not hacks app. Well, it can be hex app, but in this case, it's going to be the count app. Count app. So, with web components, what's the first thing you need to do? Is you need to import those using script with type equals module. And we're going to import the scripts.js file. Let's create that file scripts.js, and inside of that file, what are we going to import? We're going to import a file called countapp.js. Let's create countapp.js, and it's going to be a lit element. So all the time I have to do this is go over to lit element, Go to the getting started the templates and grab an example. I really need to add this to my snippets, but for now, let's just do that. We're going to add count app extends from lit element. It's going to render our count. So it's going to render this dot count is what it's, so I want to show the current count uh, of the application. Now, lit element is not just going to know where that value came from, you need to register it as a property. Static, get properties, and we're going to return an object that says count is of type number. Then in the constructor, call super first off before we do anything, and set count equal to zero. So what's the initial state of count? So this is an example of setting a local state value. So the count app is a web component. It has a local state of count. The local state of count equals zero. Let's go on, there we go, my sweet counting app. And instead of my element, it's going to be count app. Count app, count app, count app. It's going to be there. Go to script type module, count app, goes there. Why aren't you working? Why aren't you working? Why aren't you working? Let's debug here. 
lit element must have references. Aha, of course. So let's do unpackage. So this is going to be the quick and easy way, lit element. And we're going to specify to load it with the module flag. Cool. We now have our count app, and it has count. Now, what happens if we set it to 10? Of course, you change the local state. It's going to render that local state there. Perfect. Everything's fine. Um, everything is hunky-dory. Now, the problem comes in whenever we need to do this. So count app also needs a count toolbar, naturally. It's going to tell the user how great they are. count toolbar count toolbar is going to have the same local state it also is going to know about count it's just going to do something a little bit different it's going to say hey there user you have a count of yay going to say state equals 10 and then we're going to add import the toolbar and use it in our app here count toolbar yay everything looks good here uh, I, I know that you probably anticipate what the problem is going to be and that's whenever we try to change the state course because whenever we add this new button of increment count it's going to be this little plus sign and we say that whenever you click it it's going to change this dot count by incrementing it and to do that we need to wrap it in a function. Okay, so this is a quick and dirty way of altering the count here right from um, the render function. Added a button that whenever you click it, it's going to just add one to whatever the state of this dot count is. So whenever I click it, it's going to increment it, but oh boy, that one's not uh, showing up. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? So Naturally, what you are going to do is you're going to use the platform. This is what we always suggest. Use the platform. Web components use the platform. So the platform would be slightly different than this. Same idea, but you would say increment count as a function. Inside of that function, you would say uh, increment count, which is a function that not only changes the count, okay, so not only changes the count, but it needs to notify everybody what the count is. And the way that it does that is um, it does this. It says this dot dispatch event. Right. Is that right? dispatch event and in dispatch event we're going to dispatch a new custom event this custom event is going to take uh, two arguments here it's going to say what's the name of your event and I'm going to say count changed and it's going to say what are the details of this event and I'm going to say well the details is the count is set to whatever the, this dot count now is. So that's what's going to so, so basically the way that web components work the way that component architecture in general works is uh, props down events whoa props down events up so uh, in this case, we have an app that's changing the state, which means it needs to throw an event that, that, uh, that goes up 
which will allow um, higher order components to catch that event that will then send the props down to their child components to change their state. So that's the way that component architecture works with handing values back and forth. That's how this toolbar that's kind of totally separate from this app, that's how it's going to know what's happening inside of this count app. Now some um, pro tips here. Um, whenever you're dealing with web components, generally speaking, you're going to want to set bubbles to true. You're going to want to say cancelable to false. Generally, you can play with that. Um, and you're going to say composed to true. So uh, what those mean are that's going to help this event pass up through uh, web components, even web components that uh, are shadow domed. So it's going to allow your event to pass more easily through this uh, maze of components. So where does this event go? How does this help our toolbar at all? Um, what we would do is in the constructor of our toolbar or in the connected callback, whichever, you would say um, window dot add event listener dot count change. So we're listening for the count change event to pass the whole way up through our DOM to the window. And whenever it does, we're going to call a function in here. We're going to say the, I want you to call the count changed function. And we're going to bind that with this. So what that's going to do is it's going to call a new function in here that's called count changed, which is now going to be sent event. And we're going to send uh, count changed the uh, this um, the the this reference so the reference to the correct this or else it'll get confused. So what that looks like if you console log that, you should see this in action. Cool. So our custom event is firing. Um, it's getting all the way up to the window, uh, the highest level of the DOM. And it's letting our toolbar know that, hey, something's changed. And you can find out what the new count is in the details. So it's up to you to update your local state. I'm not going to do it for you. So we say, OK, fine. We will handle that. That's not a problem. We're going to say that set this dot count, our local state of count, to the event dot detail dot count. So this is the new changed count. So when we do that, we should see that, hey, we just successfully handled state management on our own using the platform. Hallelujah. High five. OK, well, that's fine. Um, and that's totally doable. And I would recommend you do it that way until you start running into issues of scale. So until um, you start writing lots and lots and lots of these event listeners until you start getting confused of which event listener should I really tie into. I mean, a count changed could not be the only change event for count. It could be count change, count is in edit mode, count something is editing, but don't the count, but don't change yet, but let the user know that they can't edit it in your toolbar but um, because it's being edited in the count toolbar, what you're talking about is adding lots of different t um, versions of what your state is. Each one of those uh, versions would probably result in a new um, event listener that you would have to be on the lookout for. And I'm not even going to mention how you have to clean up. I am going to mention it. Um, but whenever you add these event, event listeners, each one needs to be disposed of. So you need to say disconnected callback. And then you're going to copy this and you're going to say remove event listener. So you need to do that with every single one or else what's going to happen is you're going to start using this app. It's going to be nice and crisp, nice and speedy. And as you stay on the page long enough, navigate through pages long enough, 
your site is going to start slowing down and that's because there's going to be so many events attached to the window that it's going to start uh, slowing down. Okay. So let's say that you have reached this point and now you're on the market, uh, in the market for a new state management solution. Let's see what this, uh, how this could be replaced with MobX and improved with MobX, this developer experience. You get rid of all that. I'm going to get rid of this custom dispatcher. And I'm going to add a new file that's called store. And with store, I'm going to, so with store, I'm going to import uh, from MobX a few different functions. I'm going to import um, to start observable decorate. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Before I implement any of these functions, what we need to do is we need to set up a new class. And this class is going to be our store. So whenever you're researching uh, state management solutions, they often refer to the store and um, the notion that there's really uh, three pieces of uh, state management. There's the store, there is the view layer or the render layer, and there uh, is an actions layer. And what's going to happen is the store is going to be in charge of notifying the view or the renderer to update itself uh, whenever things change in the store. And the only thing the store needs to do is listen for new actions. So in your view layer, what you're going to do is whenever the user clicks the increment count button, that's not going to change anything locally. That's not going to just reach out and change the count. Oh, no, no, no. It wants you to release an action. This action will be called um, count in increment count. The store will catch that action. It will know what to do with it. It will change the correct property in the store, which will notify the renderer. And it's the circle of life. Everybody's happy. And there's not going to be collisions all over the place. So that's ideal. That's called unidirectional data flow. Um, MobX does all that, but it does it in a much, uh, more, uh, a much more magical way. So there's a lot of things happening inside of MobX that you're not aware of that it's doing on your behalf. Uh, whenever you write Redux, you are writing that whole process out. You are explicitly, painstakingly specifying each and every step in that process. So MobX sort of took the different direction of saying, can we hide a lot of that functionality from the users so that you don't immediately want to vomit whenever you start uh, implementing a state management solution? Okay. That being said, MobX, here's where we're setting up the store. So we're going to set class store. We're going to find a new class that's called store. And the only thing that we need to set in here is what's, uh, what value do we need to start tracking in this store. We're going to do that in the constructor of this new class. And the only one that we're going to track right now is this dot count, right? We're going to set it with an initial value that is zero. And now we need to decorate this store. So we've created the class, but the class by itself doesn't really know how to do any of this magical functionality. That's where the uh, decorate function from MobX comes in. Now, before I show you how I do it, there are two different ways of doing it. There's using it the, the brand new ES7 way. I forget which, what you'd really call it with uh, what are called decorators. And decorators are where, um, if you've ever seen an at symbol with like, something written uh, over top of it. That's called a decorator. And it's really just a way for you to write less code. Um, so instead of writing observable on like here or something like that, what you would do is say decorate store. Pass it the store class that we just made and give it an options uh, object that is what do you want to track? Well, I want to track the count that's in there. How should it be tracked? It needs to be an observable. There are a few different ones. There's uh, computed and actions. 
um, which we can take a look at in a little bit. But for right now, the, the majority of what you want is our observables. This is a state that needs tracked in a central store and updated uh, in all of the, the uh, web components that are subscribing to it. Okay, so we've done that, decorated it. We just need to export it. We're gonna export a const of lowercase store. And this lowercase store is gonna be an instance of our new class, new store. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have all of our web components uh, pull in this store value, which is an instance, a singular instance of our store. It's gonna pull that into every web component that needs to interact with it. So let's do that. Let's go to the app. We're gonna import our store. And we're gonna import the store property. Now what do we do? Well, um, before I show you the cool base class, let's see how we would traditionally do it with, uh, with MobX using um, something like lit element. What we'd do is we would, we would give, we would have people import the store, which we've done, but then we'd have them import this magic function from uh, MobX called auto run. And what auto run is going to do is it's going to sit right here in either the constructor or the connected callback. And we are going to subscribe to changes of count in the store. So we're going to say store.count equals this.count. So what that's going to do is say, I want my local property of count to reflect at all times the value of store.count. Okay, so I'll do that. And, and whenever I was talking about the magic of MobX, this magic auto run function is just gonna know that I'm accessing the count property inside of the store and it's gonna add uh, listeners for that property specifically. So you don't need to have to worry about it. Auto run just sort of figures it out, uh, which makes it pretty magical and saves you typing. Okay, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna do something very similar to tool toolbar. We can do something very similar. We're gonna do the exact same thing. This dot count equals this dot count. So fingers crossed, that's not working. Let's see why it's not working. Store dot count, store dot count, auto run, auto run. I wonder if it has to be in the connected callback. Toolbar, count Hmm. Um. <laughs> oh, right. Of course. So, um, we are subscribing to the um, initial value of the store, but our increment function does not tie into the store yet. There it is. Let's fix that. So in our increment count, instead of saying that this dot count equals our change to count, we're gonna say that store dot count. So remember when I was talking about that unidirectional data flow, what I was uh, spacing on is that for this whole thing to work, you're not gonna just change the value of count locally. No, 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 you're gonna change it in the store. The store will then tell your local uh, value when to update 
and uh, then the whole circle of life is fulfilled. So now, if I increment it, it should be uh, rosy. That's awesome. Now the one thing I will say that uh, this kind of stinks a little bit is that we need to dispose this still. This is not, this one thing is not a free ride. Um, we need to say this.disposer and still in our disconnected callback, we need to call the dispose uh, disposer function on that. So uh, similar to the built-in functionality of adding and removing event listeners, we need to add and remove the uh, auto run function. Now once you've done that, um, this is pretty nice because now I can add a new piece of functionality to the toolbar. Let's say that I need to add a reset button. And whenever you click it, on click, whenever you click it, it's going to say store count equals zero, okay? That should just work now, right out of the box. Perfect. So that was awesome. Can you imagine if I was trying to add the reset? I would have to then dispatch a new action, make sure that everybody knows that I'm reset, uh, what uh, event listener name I'm using. Hopefully I can re reuse the um, count change um, uh, event, but maybe I can't. Maybe I need to set a, send up a new event that's saying the count about to change. Um, so once you implement um, a, an application using the uh, platform, you, you'll start running into this. Um, and you'll, you'll realize that, you know, maybe I should take a look at the state management stuff, the state man management libraries. Maybe they can make my life easier. Okay, so that's great. And, and just, to, just to illustrate the MobX way of running a store, what if I don't want to have these uh, changes just specified locally? What if I want to specifically say what increment count is? I mean, in this case, it's kind of um, trite because we are just incrementing it by one, but that could be more complex logic. So maybe we, we want to say, oh, I know, this is a good example. Here we go. So increment count. What about uh, decrement count? Okay, that's something where um, lots of these functions of toolbar will want to use that. This app will want to use that, but it's not going to just be decrementing it here. Let's, let's set it and see what the issue is going to be. Hopefully you can guess what the issue is. This dot. I hope I'm spelling this correctly. I'm probably not. <laughs> but I'm not going to worry about it. Um, okay, so increment increases at infinity. Decrement is going to decrease at infinity. So what is that going to look like? Okay, that looks great. Reset, I go to do, oh, no, 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 no. I can't do that. There's no such thing as negatives in this application. So what am I going to do? Because the toolbar is going to want something pretty similar to that. It's going to want to say you can decrement and you can reset it. You can't do, you can't increment. Maybe you can, but you know, for now, let's, let's say that there are two options. Okay, so both of these should be able to uh, decrement. Uh, I 
I should be able to just do that, right? Let's see if that works. Yep, so that works. Okay, so this is an example where my store needs to handle that functionality. It's not observable per se, but um, it's, a, it's a new method, a new action that I need to control. So inside of my store, I'm going to add a new action. I'm going to say set, uh, where, what should it be, what should it be, what should it be, where, I'm going to say, we're just going to call it decrement count. It's going to be a function. This function is going to be really simple. It's going to be return the decremented value of this dot count, but wait a second. We need to know if it's zero because if it's zero, if this dot count equals does not equal zero, or better yet, if it's below one, then or it's only going to work if it's above zero. So if it's above zero, then we can decrement it. Or we can say this dot count is equal to the decremented version of this dot count. Right? So now what is this? It's not observable. We need to decorate it down here. We're going to say that this is an action. This is an action. I'm going to say decrement count is an action. OK, let's see if that works. So now, instead of decrementing the count with this dot decrement, I'm going to say store dot decrement count. And I'm going to put that into a function, or else it will just run immediately, and that is not what I want. OK. Decrement count. Let's go. Come on. This should work. Works. Works. <gasps> it worked. Awesome. So it's not letting it get the value. But if I do that, oh, see, you can, you can see where I'm going with this. So keeping that functionality in sync can be challenging also. That's where um, state management tool and specifically MobX really shine. Just throw it in the uh, store. Make sure that everybody's using the function that's in the store because everything, all the functionality, all the logic um, for what this thing should do will be, will be held in that store. OK. Let's keep going with this. We'll say this dot, or I'm sorry, we're going to say store dot decrement count. Now this works, this works, this now works, reset works, voila. Everything is hunky dory. Perfect. Thank you, MobX, you're making our life easier. Now, can we push it even further? Yes, we can. Because what we can do is we can get rid of some of this stuff. So you see how we have to set local states of all of the values that we want. So if we're interacting with count and these two web components, and what we have to do is we have to create local instances of that property um, and, and, and bind the store, the property that's in the store to these local instances. It's okay. It's what we've been doing. Um, I, if it's the only thing we had, then then that's great. But luckily, the fine folks over at Adobe um, solved this problem and solved it with a new base class called MobX Lit Element. Lit Element. There you go. Okay, so it's at Adobe slash Lit hyphen MobX. They haven't cut uh, one release yet, but it's still um, something I'd recommend you uh, checking out because it makes your life super simple. Because what you can do is extend from not lit element, but mobx lit element. Then you can just get rid of all this stuff. 
You can get rid of the constructor, the properties. I no longer need a local count. You can get rid of the connected callback, the auto run, the disconnected, all that jazz. And what you can do is now say like store count increment that. Get rid of these. You see how clean that looks? See how easily readable that is? Um, I don't have to create local instances of everything that's going to confuse people. I'm just literally getting to the store, getting to the functions I need, getting to the values I need, and putting them right in the render function. So there's no this.count, there's only store.count. Really, really helps simplify things here. So everything works perfectly. Let's finish this off by um, taking it to the toolbar. Get rid of all this stuff. Get rid of disconnected. So long. Get rid of anything that says this.count. It's only store.count now. And bam, you have just created a really super sweet counting app that um, you can now start tacking on new pieces of functionality knowing that you have this nice uh, MobX store that's going to help you out with all your state management needs. So. Uh, I will push this up to the uh, a GitHub repo. It will be located at uh, github.com slash, it's called MobX, uh, HacksCamp MobX demo. So push it up there so that everybody can have access to it. And um, yeah. I hope you like it. Um, I, I'm really impressed with this workflow. It's really taking uh, state management, boiling it way down, just making it very digestible to uh, the average user. Um, and I'm really excited uh, to, to code new things with it. So hope you like this video. Um, give me a shout if you have any questions, any suggestions. Um, um, I'd love to hear from you.